Well, I'm going to talk about uh, kind of a tuning and maintenance guide on the Mini Skeeter. Um, first thing we'll cover is the tires and the bearings. Um, when you're racing, you really want to check your bearings every day. And basically, you just lift up the uh, axle and spin the tires to make sure the bearings aren't uh, binding. If they don't spin long, it's either the bearings are gone bad or you're tightening the bolt too hard or the spacer that we put in between the two bearings in the rim is too tight and it actually puts side load on the bearings and uh, makes them so I think they wear out sooner because they're always under load no matter what. As you can see, those are pretty free-spinning um, bearings, not too bad. Another problem I've had, too, is I'll pack them with grease, and you can see the grease is coming out right here. I might have put too much in, I don't know, but the seals don't hold grease great, so that's why you have to check them often. I'm using uh, regular wheel or tires and they're ribbed and they work okay and they're fairly round uh, and they're really inexpensive um, I think I bought these for 12 something a piece but uh, the compound of the rubber we think is softer and so they they wear out pretty fast which is kind of a bummer we're coming we're coming to a consensus that these uh, Carlisle uh, smoothies, they're called smooth, smooth implement tires, uh, seem to be a better choice. They're a little bit heavier because they're a little bit thicker, so they last longer. Um, the only problem we found with them is that they're the way they construct them they have this band right here and sometimes there's bumps here and it's kind of the luck of the draw when you buy some if you if you know you don't know until you inflate them if you can have a bump there and I've had bumps that they seem to uh, when you start wearing them down they seem to round themselves out but we'd all prefer to have round tires than bumpy tires Tire pressure. Um, I like to run 40 to 45 pounds in the rear. Um, when you have them less, like in the 30 pound range or 20, you're going to be really slow. The front, the front, yeah, you might want to have uh, 35 if it's really windy and the steering's getting kind of. Uh, choppy if you let a little pressure out it'll smooth that out and eliminate the choppiness on the steering so I've got the uh, a mask crane I made here and it slips into the end of the, the mast on the top rotates and I've got my line here and uh, it's important to have the line pulling this way, not straight up, uh, with the 5-5 five, five sail, which is this one. This is the big sail. Because we're having issues with uh, the leech opening up if, if that isn't uh, pulled tight. So, and the only downfall is, when you do that, is the uh, sleeve of the sail gets forced this way. And it looks a little ugly. However, uh, we know that uh, it's having a tight leech is more important than having a tight luff on top of the mast. Some of us have uh, cut our mast length down slightly from the uh, maximum length. And what we're trying to do is the shorter the mast, the stiffer it gets. And the stiffer it is, especially on the top, the less the leech opens up. 
Now on, on mine, I cut it too much, and what I'm recommending is about three or four inches off the maximum size, which you'll find on the plans. And where you want to cut it is right here, right below the tip. Yeah, what you want to do as well is check your batten tension occasionally. Sailworks gives us this little wrench here, and this goes in there. It's just a little Allen wrench, and you can turn them or loosen them. And what I found is these do loosen up, and uh, uh, so every once in a while you want to check them, make sure the battens have a certain amount of tension on them. As far as the batten tension, this is what's called too tight. It's when you get like kind of an S in your batten. That's too tight, so you should back it off until it doesn't do that. I think, yeah, right about there. You don't want it so tight that it's not having the proper shape in one direction. Uh, it's really important in light air to read the leeward side of the telltales so that they're flowing straight back. And if they're not, you're basically you're stalling the sail. Um, the inside windward ones are not quite as important. It's more important to get the outside to flow right. And um, in most cases, if they're stalled, that means you have to sheet out. Um, or you have to turn up into the wind slightly until they flow right. And then another trimming tool is this adjustable out hole. And it tightens the sail on the foot. And when you release it, it gives more draft. So getting started, you want it released. And also, in lighter air, you might want to just have it released to have more power. And also, in medium to light air going downwind, you might want to release it to have more power. And then, of course, going, going to weather, you want it sucked in tight to give you better pointing ability. And another key thing too is you want your your sheeting system to land as even as possible so you can sheet in harder. And also um, you want it's mine is fairly neutral, meaning it's not pulling this way or this way. And I think that's important. Um, and another thing that's important too is to get it to where the yoke is free riding here. It's not hitting. It could be closer than that, but that kind of depends on this location here and also the way the box pull. It all affects where this lands. And, um, and another thing too, let me release the main sheet. And this kind of depends on your mass rake too. But if you follow the plans, you want to tie your sail height up there to have the center of this be about seven or eight inches up off the deck. And that will get you the right amount of tension back here. So you can sheet pretty hard. And the harder you can sheet, the tighter the the leech becomes. When you leave your boat unattended, um, 
First thing you want to do is get a lanyard here and tie off the front wheel back to the forks back here. That way you can can only roll so far. And um, also another really good thing to do is just unlace your main sheet and the sail can go all the way around in 360 degrees and just weather vane in the wind and the boat won't be under any load or tip over or anything. That's the beauty of an unstayed rig.